All right, welcome back. We have the parish president, Gordon Dove, here with Reggie Dupre, executive director of the Levy District. Welcome aboard, guys. Thank you, Martin. And, and on a sad note, uh, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Mr. Jim Ernie, who passed away. And y'all knew him well, Gordy. Your thoughts? Yeah, Martin. He, you know, he was a good friend. His uh, my, my heart and prayers go out to his wife and his children and. You know, he's, uh, you know, as we were just talking in 1986, he, he started with the uh, levy board. He's one of the reasons we had the point we're at now is the, mm -hmm. I call him the early pioneers of it. And mm -hmm. he, you know, he was the director for quite a few years. Reggie probably can tell you exactly yeah, South when. Terrible and Tidewater Management, I think. Right. Right. Back then, yes. Yeah. And uh, he was instrumental in getting levies built and that started a lot of what we're finishing and, and we're trying to complete today, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's a sad event and uh, he went a little bit before his time and so my heart and prayers go out to him and his family. Yeah, and certainly Reggie, you knew him well too and Jim yes. was always just a upbeat kind of person, positive, and it was shocking to hear about his death, but like Gordy said, one of those pioneering uh, people that were on board way back in the day, in the Lennon Chabert days. Yep, he started, uh, Lennon Chabert created the South Terrible and Tidewater District as a rea in 86 as a reaction to Hurricane Juan. And Jim led those efforts in South Terrible and Tidewater for 12 and a half or 13 years. But coincidentally, about the same amount of time I've been with Terrible and Levy District now. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, you know, back then there was no money. They just peeled off a little bit of money from a Chafalaya Le Levy district. I mean, they had to, but they started the plan way back then. And finally in 92, they, you know, with the help of Billy Tilzan, we started Morganzas at the Gulf. And after now almost 30 years, it looks like we finally in line for some big federal money. Did you see Jim on the bottom right yep. end of your screen right there? That's the, uh, I think it's and Mr. Sue's in there, I believe. Yeah, I see Mr. Yep, Sewers on yep. the on the right side. Uh, yep, sure is. He's still the vice president. He's still he's one of the oldest members of the of the board. So uh, he's kind of the common denominator. But uh, I see Carl in there too. Going yeah, in Carl the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Buddy Daisy. Yeah. Uh, Pete Lambert, I think, is the other guy when he looked a little younger. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Dave Crochet and uh, wow. Mr. Uh, Pellegrin. Wow. Yeah. That's a, a picture from, I remember doing a film way back in 86 for South Terrebonne Levy District, but, uh, and, and for everyone watching, you could see uh, the one-on-one -on, -one on Mr. Jim Ernie. We're going to run it this week in remembrance of Mr. Jim, so our condolences from the station for sure. Let's switch gears a little bit. Uh, we've got some things popping with monies from the state level and all that, so Gordon, we'll give you the floor first. A lot of things happening right now. Yeah, Martin. I mean, uh, of course, you know, we, 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 we just talked about the, you know, about the, 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 our biggest goal with the parish, we've got electricity to all, all your households in Terrebonne Parish that can receive it. They have water. And now it's, we're in a rebuilding phase, but we still have to get the temporary housing as we were discussing earlier. And, you know, businesses are open back up and we're starting to move. You, you know, we're starting to move. The good news is having dealt with the hurricane in the whole month of September, we just got our reports in on our sales tax. And we're 2% up in sales tax collections, even though we missed a lot of it. So you can see the purchasing being going on right now in Terrebonne Parish for everyone to get, the, you know, get their homes and their buildings and their facilities back in line. So... You know, that's a good thing. So this month will even be more in sales tax because, you know, even though we had a catastrophic event, we still <clears throat> we still have a government to run and mm -hmm. we still have to keep it fiscally re And that's stable. the bright side of having a natural disaster. We always say it, you're going to have a spike. <clears throat> now, if car dealers could get inventory and different things of that nature, everything's going to boom again for a little bit. That's correct. I mean, you know how difficult it is to get a car. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, you know, you're, you better your particular type of car you mm -hmm. want. So everything's coming around, everything's uh, timely. Now we're in a phase two where there's hundreds of millions of dollars out there and that's, that's our job is to go get that money. It's called mm -hmm. Community Development Block Grant money, hazardous mitigation money, and different grants. And, mm -hmm. uh, 
and we've you know we we we've hired a um, lobbyist, we've hired a, a consultant on the paperwork of FEMA, but I mean not, not only FEMA but all federal government, as you know, is stack of paperwork, you know, mm -hmm. and and we we want to make sure that at the end of the day we've gotten every nickel we can out of emergency funds that have been allocated by Congress mm -hmm. and uh, to, to Terrebonne Parish and rebuild Terrebonne Parish bigger than better than it ever was. Yeah, let me ask you, we have about a little over a minute for this segment. We'll come back for another one. But, Reggie, some things happen. I'll let you at least start the conversation. The state, Chip Klein, coming to Terrebonne Parish this week, too. With the governor, I think? No, he's coming. I don't think the governor's coming okay. this week. We were supposed to actually this week have the groundbreaking for the Homer Navigational Canal Lock Complex. We're pushing mm -hmm. that back till early November. Yeah. But Chip is coming Wednesday to Homer just to review, uh, you know, the, the reaction to the hurricane and uh, – uh, we, some of our financial needs, the state will be, uh, CPRA will be helping the levy district with about $10.7 million. Right now, the repairs to the floodgates and debris removal, we think we're about $15 million into it. That's going to help greatly. Mm -hmm. uh, thank God we did put uh, insurance on these barge floodgates, so some of those damages right. will be covered by insurance. But FEMA and insurances take a little while, and the contractors need to get paid in the meantime. We had... A couple of weeks ago, a very extensive interview with uh, Connie and Stu and Lizzie at Sportsman's Paradise in Cocodry, and we showed you the effects of Lake Boudreaux and Lake Robinson. Well, uh, Mr. Dove came with some good news to Dan, and we'll give him the floor because it seems like uh, they're already trying to get something done for Lake Boudreaux. I'll give you the floor. Yeah, Martin, and talking with Chip Klein, with the, the director of the uh, Coastal Protection Restoration Authority, I went ahead and, and uh, uh, put a, a letter uh, on by, an emergency request for $5 million to build an eight-foot uh, breakwater rock jetty from Boudreaux Canal to Robinson Canal, which is, which is um, approximately 20,300 linear feet and uh, that to start immediately so I can have it for next hurricane season. Yeah, as we all know what happened is the winds were so, so atrocious, it blew the water over there, billions of gallons, if not trillions of gallons, mm -hmm. and then it, it, it stacked it up against the gate, even though the gate has through tubes in it to allow the water to be released, it just, it overwhelmed it. it I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's, uh, so this should stop it, and, and uh, CPRA is on board with it. They're trying to move the money forward. It has not been approved, but they are in favor of it, so that's a good point. I, you know, I think we have a very good shot, and I want to get started immediately, basically do the same thing I did on Island Road, mm -hmm. which was two and a half miles. And, and that gives them at least some confidence <clears> that, <throat> because they were debating whether or not to rebuild. Now they know they're going to have some protection, so it might spur them on to start rebuilding. That's right. Well, they're going to have a 12-foot levee on one side that the levee board built, mm -hmm. and if this goes through, they're going to have an 8-foot rock wall on the west side of Highway 56 that will stop Lake Boudreaux from coming over and doing what it did before. So trying to tame Lake Boudreaux and Robinson, the, the base. Within of, the system. Yeah, yeah. This is what outside Correct. waters. This is within our own system. Absolutely. Truly amazing. Yeah, it really was to say that. Reggie, let's talk about a continuing resolution uh, that may uh, be a bonanza for Terrebonne Parish. So, yes, uh, Martin. So Congress uh, passed the continuing resolution to keep the federal government open, I think, till December. Included in that CR, or continuing resolution, is all is the emergency funding from Ida and I think from Laura last year. Uh, we looked at the various pots of money. Uh, one of them is to Mississippi River and tributaries, and Morganza the Gulf is part of that. So we might be eligible up to half a billion dollars, and that's already signed by the president. Now is uh, working with the Corps of Engineers, so we might have our first big infusion of money to Morganza. And look, we, we're yeah. approaching the 30th anniversary when we started this in wow. next year. Uh, yeah. There's also some other pots of money that we may be eligible for. And if and when the, the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill passes, which has not yet passed, it passed the U.S. Senate but not mm -hmm. the House yet, there's a, an additional $500 million 
in that particular bill that's eligible for Morganza. So finally, finally, after all these years, we might be looking at Big Brother coming in and participating in this federal project, and we might live to see it completed. We never thought that would happen, would we, Gordy? No, no. <laughs> I mean, what it took, a Cat 5, or even though it's a Cat 4, I believe it's going to be re re reclassified as a Cat 5, and yeah. it took uh, just a hurricane to come in to finally roll that money in Washington. What right. make, what make, can we say Cat 6? Because I think we're going to be close, you know. Yeah. There's no Cat <laughs> 6, but, I mean, I think these storms are getting just, they're out of control. Reggie, and, and to give credit, and I know Gordy wants to also, but uh, the governor and Chip Klein, yeah. they have not neglected Terrebonne and Lafourche Parish. Absolutely Matter of fact, not. they have spent a lot of money here. They have. They've spent a lot of money, and they uh, they they get with us and what's what's the priorities, and they've uh, they've not said no. I mean, they said we might have to wait till uh, next year or or work on it, but. <clears throat> They have worked very, very closely with us and set this foundation because, you know, up till now we have over half a billion dollars we put on the ground mm -hmm. and it's pretty much 50-50, uh, half local and half state. So the, mm -hmm. so the state administration, the governor, CHIP, CPRA has all been on, on board 100%. But, Gordy, if we take that local money and state money, which we thought was all we would ever have, and now we add some federal money, how high are we going to build the levees at that point? Well, we need to go to 21 feet. Mm -hmm. And you know what? One thing we're not even talking about here is about flooding. We had 15 to 20 inches of rain during this event. The reason we're not talking about running because we spent millions and mil we spent $100 million on our pumping system in Terrebonne, and it worked. Mm -hmm. And the governor and, uh, and Chip Klein and them gave us $10 million to build we're under construction of Elliott Jones, which is in the Chakula Basin, will even be pumped quicker. We, we, we have one right now that's pumping it at Hanson. So one thing we've taken out of the equation is the flooding aspect of it. Right. Now we have to work on the wind and, and, and more protection. And you're going to have that breakwater, rock levee uh, on Lake Boudreau. So that's going to eliminate a lot of people that flooded too. That's, that's right. Correct. You know, just to follow what Gordy just said, I'm going to borrow a quote from Wendell Curo. Uh, Flood control and drainage is the only sport that you only take score for a loss. Nobody worries about a floodgate that worked or a levee that did not fail or did not overtop <coughs> or a pump station that worked. But we can see the results. 15 inches of rain for a major hurricane and basically no drainage problem. Mr. Dove, let me ask you a question. The the island road, something similar that you're going to do on Lake Boudreau and Robinson now. You really had a good test pattern for uh, Island Road, and it seemed to have worked. It worked both ways, Maude, because the Island Road was hit with a, a coming from the south of surge, mm -hmm. and then when you had the reverse headwinds, you came from the north. And by not allowing that water to cross that road to the north or the south, it didn't eat the road out. I mean, you could go drive to the island right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. And so it was very successful. And of course, everything I do to repair it now is FEMA funded. And, and that's the, what would we want to do with the, uh, for Boudreaux Canal to, to Robinson Canal. But doesn't Canal. that give you a good template when you're talking to Chip or you're talking with somebody about money? You can, they can say, well, how do you know it's going to work in Lake Boudreaux? Well, it worked on Island Road. And if you got look at the pictures, all those fishing piers, they were fishing on them day before yesterday when I went. Mm -hmm. So the piers were fine. The terracing that the levee board built, that was all fine. And it was, it protected that area and actually Morganza, which is in that area. Mm -hmm. Even though you did have a, a, a north wind, but you did have a south wind at one time when the, when the hurricane was coming towards us. Yeah. So it was a huge success and it shows, as we said a hundred times, that rocks work. But remember, these are 400 to 900 pound rocks. In the past, they put two smaller rocks, mm -hmm. and they just get blown away. Yeah. But, but well, we, I always know when I talk to you or the mayor of Grand Isle, <laughs> I'm going to hear the word rocks quite a bit. <laughs> hey, rocks are pro proven in, the, in this right. business. Let me ask you, if, and I learned this from going to Grand Isle, I learned it from going especially to La Rose, where the water came over the back, back in and, and came back up on them. If we wouldn't have had levee systems in Terrebonne Parish, especially the Fouche Parish, 
not only would we have seen water, we'd have seen mud like we've never seen right. before. Exactly right, Marty. And that mud is <coughs> And trying to get that out of your houses right. and your neighborhoods, it just takes months and, you know, yeah, huge this, effort. This was a mud storm. That's right. right. And in and, and, and a levee that, that was on the eastern side of Lafourche, that they've they actually get, been getting the money to build that even higher where that mud came over the top, right. that the North Lafourche levee district. Mm -hmm. they've, been, they've been warning that if you don't do this, you're going to have this. I mean, they, they, you know, hopefully everybody will hope it never would happen, but that's why, you know, you, we've got to build these levees higher and stronger. And the other thing I think this storm proved is that we we jointly all, you know, Gordy and I and Tony Alford, we all agreed that the top big priority for the federal project would be to build the <clears throat> intercoastal floodgate at La Rose. Because if you have exactly what happened, mm -hmm. if the Barataria Basin gets full, what's your, your weak spot where it's going to flood from? from the intercoastal, from <coughs> the intercoastal ran backwards. And that's why you did have some home flooding around Grand Bois in that area. It was coming from the Barataria Basin. And, and what else you have? The largest pump station in the world, right, right there off of uh, Bell Chase, mm -hmm. that, is, that could pump like 640 million gallons an hour, pumping into the intercoastal. And that's supposed to go down Barataria, but if Barataria has a surge coming in, Nowhere it's going to go. travel along there. So right. Reggie's right. To build one on the east side is 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 the is the biggest is is, is the, the, the the biggest priority as far as the gates. Of course, build one at Minus Canal. You know, as as we move forward, just to wrap up this segment for the public, oh, we've learned so much from this storm. Not that we haven't learned from other storms, but this one taught us just about everything to look for yep. that we didn't expect. Has it re-energized y'all, Reggie, on the levee district to say, hey, hey, we got to go a lot further? Absolutely, and we realized that, like Lake Boudreaux you mentioned earlier, Lake Boudreaux is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing to have the, one of the largest reservoirs in, in the United States in case you have overtopping from the south. Mm -hmm. But it's a curse when you have a reverse head at 140 miles an hour pushing Lake Boudreaux back towards the south. Mm -hmm. So that we, you know, we never anticipated that, and we have to address those issues. And we, besides uh, go, uh, what what Gordy's uh, requesting the five million to start this rock wall. We're also going to request more of a long-term solution like rebuilding the entire banks north and south of Lake Boudreaux as a restoration component. And how about sector gates and valves and things of like that? Yeah, Flap and then gates. valves and, and sec yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. So we need relief valves, more of them. That's mm -hmm. why the Petit Caillou gate did not structurally fail and Bubba Dove did. Relief valves and no relief valves. Okay, and just closing up, Gordon, we'll give you the, the floor. Uh, one foot forward every day, right? Yeah, but if we, if we, okay, this was a very weird, different type of storm. If we don't learn by, by our mistakes, not by our mistakes, because it wasn't mistakes because it's a different type of storm. But if you don't change it, like reverse head, now we know what to expect with a reverse right. head. On a, on a western eye wall, when they say it's dry, it's not dry. It's 20 inches of rain. Now, if you're 75 miles to the west, you're dry. Right. But, but of course, the eye wall hit, hit, hit Homer. It's the most beautiful western eye wall I think I've ever seen on a storm. And, 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 and we, we got drenched, but mm -hmm. our, our pump system's hell. So we've learned a lot, we've done a lot, and reverse head is, mm -hmm. a, is a new frontier. One thing I learned about this storm as we go to a break, storms can get stronger when they hit land. Right. And this one did. And they hit 88 degree water in the intercoastal is what they hit. Yeah, no doubt. It was getting yeah. strong as it came on board. Once again, the parish president, Gordon Dove, here. Reggie Dupre, the executive director of the Levy District. We appreciate them being here. More on Bayou Time. Don't go away.